Have you ever gave a video game a second chance and absolutely fell in love with it? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today I want to talk about games I gave a second chance to and absolutely fell in love with. We've all had those moments of games that we initially played with high expectations and then something just didn't click. We went back to it later and we absolutely fell in love with it. Now the first game I want to talk about may surprise a lot of folks because it's a series I don't really cover on the channel. It's a genre I don't really cover on the channel. But the first game I want to talk about is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the Xbox 360. Now you guys got to understand, uh, back then when I had just gotten my 360, the place I was working at the time, everyone played Call of Duty. And it was like every morning I would come in and folks would talk about, oh man, we had such a great gaming night. We all played Call of Duty. And I'm like, you know what? I feel like I'm missing out. I need to go get this game. And I got it. And initially it was very, it was very interesting because I was never really big in the first person shooters. And I'm, I'm still not big in the first person shooters, but... Modern Warfare 2 did something, and I'm glad I gave this game a chance because I absolutely was having a blast playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 with all my friends. And, you know, the thing about it is, is if I was to look back, even back in the 90s, going to the arcade or couch co-op, I have just as many memories logging on the Xbox Live after work and playing with all my friends, and it gave me a whole new appreciation of the first person shooter genre. I mean, right after Modern Warfare 2, we went to Halo Reach, then we went to, you know, Modern Warfare 3, we went to Black Ops, we went to Halo 4. The list goes on, and it was a genre that I never thought I would actually enjoy, but playing with my friends, playing Modern Warfare 2, it made me realize why the Call of Duty series is fun. I mean, a lot of people hate on the series now, but there's a reason why these games sell by the millions because the multiplayer, zombies, what have you, it really is the pedigree of multiplayer and playing with your friends online, bar none. Now the next game I want to talk about is actually a more recent game I downloaded on the Nintendo Switch and that is Okinawa Rush. Now. I was introduced to Okinawa Rush. My friend John on Facebook sent me a trailer, and he's like, Xander, you got to check this game out. Me and John, we share a lot of the same taste in gaming, so I definitely watched the trailer. absolutely was impressed, and I was ready to download this game. And when I played on the Nintendo Switch, I was kind of let down. I was like, man, this game doesn't really play that great. I was playing arcade mode, and I was like, ugh. You know, it's a side-scrolling ninja game that you're trying to save your family from this, like, demonic ninja clan. You're like this old, powerful sensei. The initial concept was really cool. Uh, the graphics, the sprites are really good. And the trailer, it made the game look really amazing. But when you play it, it was very janky. It was very loose. And it took me a little while. And when I started playing story mode and actually trying to uh, get myself involved with what the game's about is when the game really clicked on me. And I was like, you know what? This is not what I was expecting because when I was playing Okinawa Rush, I was expecting a more N Nintendo style indie game. And this is weird. This is a weird concept because, you know, Nintendo and Sega games platforming wise do play inherently different to say to turbo graphics or pc engine uh okinawa rush plays more like a pc engine turbo graphics game it plays more like like the legendary axe compared to say you know shinobi which i thought it would be like a shinobi kind of game but it's more like legendary axe and i'm like oh with with some awesome combos I was like, you know what, this game's not too bad. And I'm so glad I gave this game a second chance because it's becoming one of my favorite games of 2021 and I highly recommend you guys check out Okinawa Rush. Now, if you watched the latest episode of Play and Tell, you guys know I've been slowly chipping away at Lost Judgment. Uh, you guys know I love RGG Studios and one of the things I always do either while I'm playing Judgment or the Yakuza series is I always go to Club Sega and see what new arcade games they have to offer. And Lost Judgment had an arcade title that I haven't played in years and I really didn't like this game. This game was on a compilation on the Nintendo GameCube, the Sonic Gems Collection, and of course I'm talking about Sonic Fighters. Now, when I initially played Sonic Fighters on the Nintendo GameCube, I didn't like it. 
I was like, man, I can see why this game never came out to the West. It's, it's kind of bad. And it's still not a very good game, but something happened when I was playing Lost Judgment. I don't know if it was the beards or what, but I absolutely fell in love with the game. I was like, okay. So, something clicked, and I'm like, you know what? This isn't a Tekken game. This isn't a virtual fighter. This is like Looney Tunes. It's, it's very cartoony. The combo system is just everything about it is just very whimsical and cartoony and with an awesome soundtrack. And I was like, you know what? This game isn't too bad. And I'm glad I gave it a second chance. And the more I played, the more I was like, man, I would really want another, you know, Japanese only arcade title to come out to the West. And of course, I'm talking about Sega Sonic. We really need Sega Sonic over here. I mean, that's a really fun game. But Sonic Fighters, surprisingly, is also a really fun game now. Who would have thought? Speaking of RGG Studios, this last game I want to talk about may surprise you guys because initially I wasn't a fan of the Yakuza series. Okay, I never gave the series a chance when it initially came out for PlayStation 2, and I think it was for the same reason a lot of folks didn't. See, I was working at Babbage's at the time. Grand Theft Auto was huge, and we had so many Grand Theft Auto clones that came out, like True Crime, Dead to Rights. Uh, I think even 50 Cent had his own like Grand Theft Auto kind of crime. This crime like sandbox open world thing was just exploding. So when Sega first put out Yakuza, it looked like to me that it was just going to be like a Grand Theft Auto game set in the Japanese setting. I was like, okay, all right. Never played it. It wasn't until I got James Gruso, my co-host of Excess Gaming, who's a huge Yakuza fan, on my podcast, and he really, you know, gushed about the series, and his enthusiasm made me want to go and give the game a second chance. So I found a affordable copy of Yakuza for the PlayStation 2. This was back in, you know, 2015. I played it, and I was like, man, this game hasn't aged well. And I was like, man, I, I felt like I kind of missed out on the game at the time. Because I just was not having fun with it. It wasn't until Yakuza 0 came out that I was like, this is why the series is awesome. Went back and started playing the previous ones, and, and now you guys know I love the Yakuza series. And I, I, think, I, I think a lot of people had the same... Uh, feeling as I did, you know, it was Zero. Zero really, you know, elevated that series, and now, now I can't imagine not playing an RGD Studios game, but it's so funny to think at one time, I didn't really care for it. But anyway, guys, what is a game that you gave a second chance to that you absolutely fell in love with? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts and opinions, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, but also hit that bell so you're notified of all future videos that come out on this channel. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, happy gaming.